Hello, welcome back to Read Topology Masters. This video will show you how you can model with splines and how you can retopologize it and even deform it. I would like to thank Autodesk for sponsoring this series and helping me create more great content for you guys. If you're interested in 3ds Max, Maya, Fusion 360, SolidWorks in the program, please use the link in the description. So let's go ahead and get started. So splines are a great way to model things that would be difficult with polygons. So we can go in here with lines and we can just do a bunch of designs here. And one thing we can actually do when we're creating splines is turn off start new shape. And this way you can just create a bunch of splines here and just switch to circle and then just switch to line and do all this modeling. And then it is a single object here. So just as when you work with polygons and when I work with polygons, I like to apply at a poly and that way when I make a major change, it goes on new at a poly modifier. So for example, I can move this at a poly I can then select this and extrude, and now I've got this, and this is all on a separate edit poly modifier. Well, when you work with splines, you can do the same thing using edit spline. So for example, you can apply edit spline, and for example, I can go into spline, select this, then I can use Boolean. Let's say use subtraction. Boolean, now I can subtract, let's say this object from this, now I've got this, and I can keep on subtracting as well. So in order for this to work, you need to all be part of the same object. So if you don't use that option, so for example, if you create a bunch of circles without using this option, you will need to select it. And then either under circle, you can apply edit spline, or you can right click and convert to editable spline. Then you can attach it right here. And so now that it's attached, you can go to spline and boolean it away. Or for example, you need it like so. Then you can select these and then use a fillet on it. I recommend setting fillet to a hotkey. I've got that set to F, so you can get some really impressive results very quickly. So now that the basics are out of the way, let's model a very good object to demonstrate this, this fly swatter, and particularly demonstrate why retopology is a good thing in working with splines. So let's go ahead and start with, let's say a circle. And so in order to create a texture on object, you simply press M, open up your material editor, create, for example, a standard material, plug a bitmap into here, you can scroll down, bitmap, apply that to a plane, create a plane, and give your plane the same dimensions as your reference image. So for example, if it's 1920 by 1080, you simply enter in 1920 here, and then 1080, so width and then length. You can also just make one length segment and one width segment. All right, so we've got the circle also. I moved the plane a little bit below the default grid here. When you create things by default, they will be zero on the Z axis here. We can also go into the top viewport and create our circles and splines here. So I'm just gonna make sure this is zero on the X axis and we can move the variance image a little bit to the left as well. We can then, for example, change the radius of our circle. All right, now that we've got that, let's create the main object. You can also set up hotkeys for splines. For example, when I press Shift-1, I just automatically create a spline. So I'm gonna do that, go into Customize and Hotkey Editor. So I'll switch to Hotkeys, press Shift-1. As you can see, it's set to Shape, and then Shift-2 is set to Circle Shape, Shift-3, Rectangle Shape, and then Shift-4, we've got Box. Shift 5, Cylinder, Shift 6, Plane, Shift 7, Sphere, and Shift 8, maybe nothing. There we go. So this will just kind of quickly help you to create new objects here. So initial type, corner, drag type, Bezier. All right, so we can just start with, let's say the top here. So pretty much if you simply left click and don't hold, you will get these angular shapes. If you left click and hold, you get these Bezier shapes. Just kind of give you a little bit more control here for curved surfaces. So let's start here. Left click, left click and hold for Bezier. And don't worry if it's not too accurate, we can just go back here and change that. All right, right click to exit out of that, press one right away to switch the modified panel and go straight into vertex mode. All right, now we can select this 
and we can use this little bezier handle to change the curvature All right so simply left click on that and as you can see we're getting much more accurate results now so i'm not too worried about extreme accuracy i just like to get something kind of close here So it looks like we may need something in the center, so let's use Refine and left click here. Now we got a new one. All right, so just when working with geometry, you got things like symmetry. Well, when you work with splines, there's actually a separate spline symmetry modifier. So simply go into our modifiers. And now simply scroll down here and then we can use spline mirror. You can set up in your shortcuts here for quick access. We're gonna go into mirror, we're gonna right click here and we're gonna make sure it's zero on the X axis and there we go. Now it's mirrored. All right, I'm gonna Alt Q to isolate this, all right. Let's apply added spline on top. And so I don't want the sharpness here, so I'm gonna right click on that and we're gonna set it to Bezier, not Bezier corner. So now what I'm going to do is just go into spline here and we're going to use outline. We're gonna left click and that's gonna create another copy right here. All right, now we do want to just connect it here. So we're gonna go into segment. We're just gonna delete all of these inner ones. So let me just Alt Q so you can see what's happening here. I'm just deleting these. All right. Then we can click on connect, left click and hold, and then connect these. We can, for example, delete this. And then we can, for example, select this and then click on divide to divide that in half to get this one. Pretty much get something similar to this. I'm looking more at the right side than the left. All right, now we've got that. All right, let's use a line to get this. All right, so let's begin making some sense of this. First thing I'm gonna do is attach these together. Then we will go into spline and we're going to union this. So we're gonna make sure it's set to union, boolean and connect it. All right, now we've got this sticking out here, which we don't want. So I'm gonna isolate these. So I'm going to attach these. And I'm gonna select this. We're gonna make sure it's set to subtraction and boolean this. Now we've got that. We can, for example, re-mirror this. Now we've got this happening, just like in the reference image. We're gonna play it at spline. We can, for example, select these and then fill it. All right, now we got this happening. All right, now we need to have all of this happening. So we're going to circle this. Now we can keep on using, for example, outline. To keep getting this, we can select both of them and then use outline on both. And as you can see, I'm getting more and more of those objects. All right, so there we go, nice and simple. We could have also used an array, for example, but I just wanted to show you how you can use outline. So now we've got all of these objects here. All right, at this point, I've got a little problem here. If I select this object, just isolate it. We see the problem is that if I go here in the center and start moving this out, you can see how we have all these vertices here, especially on this bottom part. So what I'm going to do here is just to select all this, I'm going to weld. 
and now if you notice we just have a single one. Now you can see with this it's getting very angular here so I'm going to right click and convert to editable spline. I'm going to use interpolation I'm going to increase this. Right, I'll move this off of the side here. All right, now I need to create these lines here. So I will just use line and I will just left click. Actually, let's turn off start new shape. All right, and after using outline, you can see we've got these objects here. And I'm going to use spline mirror. So you got a bit of a problem here. So I need to move this a little bit to fix that. All right, now we've got this. All right, this time instead of doing the booleans here, I'm going to select this and detach it. Simply detach. It's now a separate object. I'm going to isolate these. I'm just going to control A and just weld just in case. This time, instead of doing the booleans here, we're going to use a special compound object under the spline section, shape boolean. All right, subtract, and we're going to add operands. We're going to add this. Now we've got this. All right, let's do the same for this as well. Let's move it back to zero and we're going to add this as well. And there we go. Now we have all of these complex details. So you can move it to the side so we can compare it to our reference image. And we have all these little pieces here. All right, one more detail to add. It's a circle. So I'm going to press Shift 2, circle, and create that as well. Make sure it's at zero. All right. Now we're pretty much ready. I will select all this and move this to the right. Let's say apply edit spine on top and attach this. And actually one thing we need to do is just to actually remove this spline here. So we're going to either delete it or use detach. Because if I now apply an extrude on this, you see we actually get a hole here. So what I need to do is to let's say detach this or just delete it of course however we do need to attach this all right now that we apply extrude we get pretty much the correct result so let's increase that amount all right, so the problem with this is that even though we have used splines effectively to model this, we can no longer bend this because there's no topology here. It's not going to bend. So if I apply a poly and try to bend this, let's see when I rig this up for an animation. Well, it's only going to bend right here and it's going to bend in a really bad way because of the huge end gun we have happening here. So this is why retopology can really help you out. I'm actually going to fix up a few little sections here, as you can see, not quite go all the way. I'm going to do that, I'm going to use Refine. Segment, delete that, and we're going to use Connect. They can, for example, delete this. There we go. And then spline mirror. All right, extrude and then subdivide and then with topology. And there we go. All right, and now through topology, we have this clean mesh right here. Of course, it's still a bit messy here, 
What we could do beforehand is remember we can just slice in half, delete the left or the right half. We can also reapply with topology and other modifier to get even cleaner results. But for a lot of this, it's very clean here. So if we want to rig this now, go into animation and then bone tools. And now I can create bones here. All right, so I'm gonna create, I'm gonna press F3. So let's say one and then two and then three. All right, and I'm just gonna hide that last one. All right, now what I can do is select this and I can just, let's say collapse the read topology modifier. Now I can apply a skin modifier. And we're going to add the three bones. All right, there we go. I'm going to select the bones and let's just say isolate it. Now I'll press N to go into auto key mode. And let's say I go to frame five and I rotate this bone. Select this one, press K to establish the keyframes. I'll go to frame 10 and I rotate it more. So now we've got this kind of animation and we can see that it will now deform correctly. So if you want to smooth this out a little bit here, we can go into the weight properties, weight solver, voxel, apply, and we can change, for example, the fall off. So because we use splines, we can model this more complex object. And because we use our topology, we can now have it easily deformed without having to go in here and manually cutting a lot of things here. Thank you for watching and take care.